Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to start to work with subtracting signed numbers. Now in the last few lessons we've worked with adding signed numbers and we've really looked at it from the perspective of you know zero sum pairs and having when positives you know combine with negatives they cancel each other out to give us a bunch of zeros and we end up you know having some kind of net negative or net positive typically right but subtraction subtraction is more difficult right especially when we start to subtract larger positives from smaller positives what happens when we subtract negatives from positives all of that is relatively confusing because negative numbers representing sort of like physical quantities are quite confusing now never forget one thing about subtraction subtraction ultimately means taking something away from something that's there okay so keep that in mind as we start to subtract signed numbers let's do it starting with a practical example in exercise number one Kirk's bank account has a hundred dollars in it he writes a check for three hundred dollars which is then withdrawn from his bank account how much money does he have now in the account all right well I'd actually like you to pause the video and try to write down some subtraction problem that should give you the answer and then think about what your answer might be all right well the subtraction problem would be the following right Kirk great name starts with a hundred dollars and subtracts 300 right and if you said well the result of that is negative 200 you'd be correct now if you're looking at that going why would it be negative 200 that seems weird well certainly if I had a hundred and I subtracted a hundred I'd be down to zero and now I have to continue to keep subtracting okay clearly I can't have a positive answer out of all of this but we're gonna see in the next few exercises how you can really visualize why you're getting negative 200 so let's move on and take a look at the next exercise now one of the really important things to have control over before we do what we're going to do today is what's known as the additive identity property oh man there are so many properties in math the associative commutative distributive additive identity all right the additive identity property though is really simple it's basically a fancy way of saying that you can add zero to any number and it won't change that number you can add zero as many times as you want so like five plus zero is five five plus zero plus zero plus zero is five three plus zero plus zero plus zero plus zero is three right you can add a whole lot of nothing to anything you want and it won't change that thing so don't forget you always have permission to add zero to things that being said let's take a look at exercise number two I'm gonna move it to the top of the screen let's do it consider the subtraction problem 3 minus 7 letter A asks us to explain why the diagram above still represents a quantity of positive 3 I want you to think about that a little bit I claim that all of this up here actually just represents the number 3 why is that pause the video now and think about it some all right well it's really this simple we've got 1 plus 1 plus 1 that's 3 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 what we literally have here is really just this right that's just equal to 3 that's it yeah, we got 3 there right now why this is so very helpful is for letter B if we cross out seven positives in other words we subtract seven what do we have left over so I mean again keep in mind right why this is so very weird three minus seven because that's literally saying look if I've got three positive ones and I subtract seven positive ones what do I have left over well it's pretty hard if I have three cookies to subtract seven cookies right so the way that we can visualize it is say well I've got three and a bunch of zero bunch of nothing right and now I have enough to get rid of 
seven positives, right? I literally just subtract these seven positives, and what I'm left with for three minus seven is four negatives. Isn't that beautiful? Right? So by taking the number three and just adding as much zero as I need to, I then have enough positives to subtract out seven from three and be left with negative four. Isn't that cool? Right? So let's take a look and see if we can do the same thing in exercise number three. For each of the following, find the indicated difference by drawing a diagram like the one above. Do you see a pattern? All right, now again, it's really important because prior to this year, right, you may have said two minus five, five minus two, it's all equal to three, all right? But it's very, very important. Two minus five is if I had two cookies and I subtracted five cookies, what would I have? Before this year, that should have really made no sense to you and maybe it should continue to not make any sense to you, but like two minus five, we can literally do this. We can say, all right, here's two. Now, I need to add enough zero onto this. So that's zero. That's zero. And that's zero. I need to add on enough positive that I can literally take away five. And when I take away five from two, I'm left with negative three. Right? Simple enough. Why don't you go ahead and draw one of these diagrams for letter B? All right, let's go through it. I have three minus nine. I wanna take away positive nine from three. Well, here's three. I have to have enough positives there now by adding a whole bunch of zero to get up to negative nine or sorry, to subtract nine. What do I have now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm close. Eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm left with negative six. Now, there were two parts. Draw the diagrams, figure out what the subtraction is, and do you see a pattern? Notice two minus five is negative three, and three minus nine is negative six. So we're getting exactly the same answer we would have gotten had we done five minus two, or nine minus three, it just happens to be negative. Anytime we subtract a larger number from a smaller number, we will always, always, always then get a negative. All right, and we'll get the negative version of the positive number had the subtraction been reversed. So, right, a useful pattern. When a larger number is subtracted from a smaller number, the result is simply the opposite or the negative of the result if the order was reversed. In symbolic form, A minus B is negative of B minus A. And that's often how we will subtract a larger positive number from a smaller positive number. In other words, take a look at exercise number four. Use the property of subtraction above to find each of the following differences. All right, so let's take a look. I'm gonna just kind of scroll this up just a bit, right? So that we can really see that down here. In other words, 15 minus 25 would be identical to the negative of 25 minus 15. Now 25 minus 15, that's just 10. And so 15 minus 25 is negative 10, right? We can do the same thing for 39 minus 72 and 4.5 minus 8.9. Keep in mind, right? We always wanna be thinking, oh, I've got a smaller number minus a larger number. Why don't you pause the video now and try to do letter B and letter C on your own. All right, let's go through them. So 39 minus 72, because we've got a smaller minus a larger, is gonna be negative of 72 minus 39. And again, you might have to do that kind of over on the side of your page. Ah, 72 minus 39, we can do a little canceling. 12 minus nine is three, 33. So that's gonna be negative 
33. Ah, and the decimal, right? 4.5 minus 8.9 is going to be the opposite of 8.9 minus 4.5. I think I can do that one without kind of writing it out. 8.9 minus 4.5 is 4.4, and so my answer is negative 4.4. That's it. Again, we get at this fact by doing what we did before. This idea that we could add, if we really wanted to do 15 minus 25, we could add 10 zeros onto 15 and then subtract off 25 positives, which would leave us a net 10 negatives. But this pattern is so useful that when you see something like 2 minus 10, you want to say, ah, well, 10 minus 2 is 8. So 2 minus 10 is negative 8. All right, we're going to use that a lot. Now, what we've been dealing with so far is what happens when we have a positive number minus another positive number that's larger than it. Let's now take a look at what happens when we subtract a negative. All right. Subtracting a negative from a positive, okay? And again, don't forget that what subtraction means is to remove that quantity. Exercise number five. Consider the following subtraction problem, five minus negative two. The negative two is placed in parentheses to distinguish it from the subtraction. All right, letter A. Consider the diagram above. Why is it still equal to positive five? So, Think about this, why do I claim that if we take all of this together, it's still just equal to the number positive five? Pause the video now and see if you can give an explanation for that. All right, well again, it's simple. We have one, two, three, four, five, zero, and zero. Right, these are just zero sum pair. I could put more of them, ah, another zero, another zero, another zero, another zero. Another zero. Right, but we just have literally 5 plus 0 plus 0. We have two zero sum pairs, so yeah, it's still equal to 5. But the great thing now is that we've got some negatives sitting here. So in letter B, it says, if you subtract the two negatives from the zero sum pairs, what do you have left? Well, if I subtract this negative and I subtract this negative, then it looks like 5 minus negative 2 leaves me with a positive 7. Right? We're literally subtracting two negative ones from zero sum pairs, which leaves me with these extra two positive ones. 5 minus negative 2 ends up being 7. Probably not that much of a surprise. Let's keep working with this. All right. When you subtract a negative, it's exactly the same as adding a positive of the same absolute value. So you notice in the last problem, we had 5 minus negative 2. And that ended up being 5 plus 2. Literally, subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive because we would be getting rid of those negatives from all those zero-sum pairs, leaving us with an equal number of positives left over. So in exercise number six, change each subtraction into an addition and find the result. All right. Well, let me just kind of get rid of this one really quick. All right. Eight minus negative seven. And again, I want you to kind of visualize this a little bit. If I had eight positives, right? There's no way to subtract any negatives from that because there's just eight positives sitting there. If I then had seven zero-sum pairs and I took all the seven negatives and threw them away, subtracted them, I'd then have an additional seven positives. So eight minus negative seven is exactly the same as eight plus seven, which is 15, right? Now, negative 10 minus negative four that's kind of a cool case, actually. I'm going to change it into addition. We're going to do that in a second. But I want you to just think about this. If I had 10 negatives, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, <laughs> one of them apparently being bigger than the other one, 
If I had 10 negatives and I subtracted four of them, what do I have? I've got six negatives left. That one we should actually be able to understand quite a bit without changing it to addition, but still, it's kind of helpful to do so, and very often, almost always, we will change subtraction of a negative into an addition problem. So negative 10 minus negative four becomes negative 10 plus four, and that takes us back to that negative six again. Finally, 18 minus negative 12, this one again is kind of like letter A, that would then be the same as 18 plus 12, and that would be 30. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive because we're stripping those negatives from those zero-sum pairs, leaving us with the same number of positives added on. All right, let's summarize this lesson. So today, we really saw kind of two different things, both of them having to do with subtraction. Number one, what happens when we subtract a larger positive from a smaller positive, you know? So like two minus 10. Well, what we saw was that two minus 10 will simply be the negative of 10 minus two. So two minus 10 is negative eight because 10 minus two is positive eight. We also saw though, how to subtract a negative, specifically by turning it into adding a positive, all right? So eight minus negative two would be the same as eight plus positive two, and so we would get 10. All right, we're gonna use this a lot in future lessons, so make sure that you get lots and lots and lots of practice on it on the homework. Until next time, I just wanna thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.